Mr. Jules Poloneski, thanks a lot for taking the time for this interview and welcome you to Qatar. And uh, first, we'd like to know more, more about the future of Privacy Forum and the goals of the forum, what you do there. We are an industry-supported think tank. Um, half of our board are the chief privacy officers of a lot of the leading companies around the world. And then the other half are advocates and academics. We believe that there's value to data use. There are great innovations going to be available, uh, cures for diseases, traffic, better ways to interact with one another. But using data also comes with risks, um, being profiled, being tracked, um, abuse of the data, harm, government access. Uh, and it's critical that businesses act morally and ethically so that we have the benefits of data use and we minimize the risks and the problems of data use. Hmm. So when you talk to businesses about how they should morally uh, deal with the issue of privacy, what motivates them to actually do so? You know, most industry, um, I think, is struggling with how to talk to users about data use. For many years, they didn't want to talk about privacy. They thought they'd scare users away. But today, data is a key feature. I don't look at location as a privacy feature on my phone. I look at location as a way that I can get better directions, a way I can get things personalized. It can have a privacy implication. So my argument to industry is featureize the data use. Give us a setting, give us a control, give us transparency. Most users will give you even more data so that you can serve them better. Don't be creepy. Don't do things behind their back that they don't know about. Don't use their data in ways that would embarrass them or harm them. You can do very well and you can make a lot of money and you can be very successful with users' data if you give them some control over the process with permission the sky is the limit. You can serve them, tailor them, do what you want. If you don't have their permission, or if they don't know what you're doing, then the gates come down, um, and it's about privacy, and about minimizing data, and about keeping you, the business, out. So it's good for business to use data for users, help them, don't do things to them, do things for them. Why do you think there is a perception that privacy is a complicated process? Is it actually complicated or do we just... Privacy is different for every person and in every culture. Uh, we did a very interesting survey recently in uh, Canada, the US, Mexico. Hopefully we'll do it maybe in the Mideast and Europe. But we asked people, are you sharing your location with anybody? No, they are, they aren't. We said, okay, give us your phone. Give us your phone. And then we would show them that their location was being sent to an app or it was being sent. Uh, in the U.S., the users said, oh, I don't like that, but uh, I like this app. I'm going to keep it. Maybe I'll just turn off location. I'm kind of annoyed, but whatever. In Canada, they started cursing. What? Who did that? How dare you? In Mexico, they were relieved. They said, you know, if something happens, if I'm kidnapped, someone will know where I am. And so there was a different outlook, you know, on the same sort of data use. Um, and so privacy can be complicated um, because for one person, it's, hey, you're giving me a better experience. You're personalizing things for me. I understand what's going on. I, I, I'd rather a relevant ad than some generic ad. For someone else, the same exact data, the same exact experience, this is creepy. You're tracking me. I don't want anybody knowing anything about my business. So it, it is complicated because uh, it can mean very different things to very different people. So how does online advertising relate to privacy? Does it help it or does it hurt it? If you told the early architects of the internet who were worried about databases exchanging information at universities, maybe email, that the main business model online in two decades would be companies tracking what websites you go to, what searches you do, and then using that to tailor the ads you'd see, they'd say, you're crazy. I mean, that's not what the internet is about. But today, there are very sophisticated data exchanges, ad exchanges, companies that are bidding to reach the right user in the right place at the right time. Um, it can be useful if used for me, if I know what's going on, if maybe you're putting a symbol on the ad saying, hey, this is a smart ad, it knows things about you, it's trying to provide a relevant experience. But if I don't know what's going on, and I'm worried about how you're using this data, is it going to be given to my insurance company? Is it going to be uh, used by an employer? Is the government going to get it? Or are you charging me higher prices? Uh, are you narrowing my world so I only see what you want me to see as opposed to what I want out there? Again, it can be very useful when my search results 
If I'm looking for Apple, hey, I'm in the technology business, I probably am interested in Apple computers. If somebody else is looking for apples, he probably wants to know about different kinds of apples, maybe wants to know what, what the plan. Um, so it can be very useful if my search engine tailors things to help me, but if it does it without telling me, and I'm seeing different things than other people, or different news, or different content, then my world is getting very, very narrow, and I'm being pushed in a certain direction, and I don't even know about it. So let's see people empowered by data. Let's not see people constrained. We need to put users in control of their data, and online advertising has the opportunity to be helpful or harmful, depending on how companies make sure that users are in control of the process. So how did social media change uh, privacy as a concept? Privacy used to be an insider issue. It was debated in political circles, in tech yeah. circles. It was a policy issue. The average person in the street, when I told them I was a chief privacy officer at a company, they said, oh, you, you fight spam? Or, oh, you're in charge of the parental controls. I get it. Now you say to someone, privacy, they say, ah, Facebook, I get it. So social media has completely changed the game. First of all, it's made it an issue that everyone on the street understands. Number two, it's made every one of us a data controller. Privacy used to be about big companies having big data and government having data and making decisions. Now, anybody can write an app, and if they're successful, they have 30 million users, and they have access to your contacts, to all your friends, to uh, everything on your phone, to whatever permission you've given. And so the data controller has become me, the individual. Instead of big brother, we have little brother. Now again, it's empowered us in a lot of ways. You know, it's great that I can ask my Facebook friends, hey, what's the best hotel? Where do I go to the beach? Give me information, and it's, it's really good information. Um, but that also means that I'm sharing more than ever before with more people than ever, and many individuals now have to think, hey, is it right for me to have all this information? What shall I do with it? So it's really a new game in today's uh, day of social media. So my final question is about mobile. Everything is now mobile. People even uh, mostly access their websites and, and their apps and everything on mobile. So how does that change privacy as well? Mobile is so personal. You know, in this country and in so many others, mobile smartphone penetration is very high. Uh, a study in the US showed that many people uh, are sleeping with their phone. It has to be within their reach or they feel that they're, you know, they're naked or that they don't have what they need. And so here's this device that not only sometimes has my location, but increasingly it's a sensor and it can detect all kinds of things. It knows where it is, it can take in uh, all sorts of information, and so it can be very powerful. I have a supercomputer in my pocket, but it also means uh, and, and, and it can use data in ways that are very helpful. I don't want to enter all the information. It's a very small keyboard. It doesn't have a big roof screen to give me a privacy policy and to explain everything that's going on. I have to rely that it's being smart and it's also being smart about how my data is being used. And so um, mobile brings the power of computing to the masses, but it also brings the benefits and the risks of data use to the masses. And it's incredibly important that we figure out how to do mobile right. We can't have people distrusting and being nervous about what their phone is doing. They have to depend on it. And so we need reasonable rules that support innovation, that allow app developers to give us new features, but also ensure that we're not stalked, that we're not creeped out by who knows where we are, um, uh, and that uh, the apps don't have too much access, they have the access we want them to have to all the very sensitive information that we have on our devices. Mm, that's great. Thanks a lot for your time, and we wish you all the best today in today's event. Thanks, Thanks. a lot. Great to be here. Thank you.